Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome as you're joining us today. Uh, good morning, good afternoon from wherever you're coming from. I'm Steve, program manager here at Encode Club. Um, welcome to the Winter Muke MEV Hackathon. This is going to be our first workshop of the series, actually. This is going to focus solely on Winter Mute, what they do kind of in depth on everything. And we have two amazing speakers with us today from the Winter Mute team. We have Julian and Felix. Wave everybody to them. Thank you for joining us today. Um, as we'll get kind of right into the session, Julian will be presenting his screen and kind of telling us more about Winter Mute in detail. So without a further ado, I will pass it over to Julian. Hello, guys. Thank you for the intro uh, and for being here. You see there's good participation, so we're really excited to, to meet you all. Um, as Steve mentioned, my name is Julian. I'm marketing manager at Wintermute. Um, I'm currently leading the organization of the hackathon alongside Encode and Flashbots. Um, so yeah, really excited to, to meet you all and, and tell you a bit more about, about us. Um, and like just, just to start a little bit, this session is going to be focused uh, not only on, on Winter itself, um, but also like a bit of our involvement in DeFi and governance. This is not going to be focused on MEV, but instead in giving you uh, a brief introduction of what we are doing at Wintermute. Um, and yes, our, our, our vision overall on, on DeFi and governance, that, that portion will be tackled by Felix, um, our DeFi engineer, uh, who nothing is, is here in the call and, and will add great value and content. Um, so just to start, I will share my presentation really quick. So here well, we go. So as I mentioned, today we're going to speak briefly about what we do at Wintermute. I'm going to tackle that, and then I'm going to pass uh, the microphone to Felix, who's going to go over DeFi and governance at Wintermute. But I, was, I, I want to also mention that next week on Wednesday, after a couple of workshops uh, that are going to be dedicated to MEV in particular, there's going to be a session that's going to be particularly for careers and ventures. So everyone who's interested in applying uh, to work at Wintermute or even is, is looking forward to um, present any kind of project to our Wintermute Ventures Arm, uh, that's going to be the exclusive um, session for that. Uh, let me see because, yeah, this is automatically going. Give me one second to resolve this. Well, maybe it's better this way. Um, so yeah, that's, that's just an introduction of what's going to happen next week too. So keep posted and, and and call in for that session too, who is gonna, that is gonna be focused on solely on, on careers and, and ventures. So for those that don't know us, uh, Wintermute is, is a trading firm. We're um, one of the biggest market makers um, and, and it's core to our business, right? We also have OTC Arm um, and we have an, a different um, business line called Wintermute ben, uh, Ventures. In terms of our market making uh, services, we support all major tokens and, and exchanges. Um, covering centralized and decentralized exchanges and trading platforms. Um, we are very strong in DeFi. We trade thousands of, of different pairs. Um, so yeah, that's that's very core to our business. Um, but we are also pretty strong in, in, in OTC. Um, so we have an OTC desk um, for institutions and, and qualified individuals that are willing to trade directly with Wintermute. Um, so that's another of our business lines. Um, and we offer trading through different um, channels that these are a chat API. And we have recently launched a platform that's called uh, Wintermute Node. Uh, that is a platform uh, that doesn't require IT integration um, for, for users to, to directly see our, our prices and trade directly with Wintermute. So I invite you all to, to take a look at it if you're interested. Um, and finally, we do have a, a ventures arm, as I mentioned that um, our our ventures team will be present next week on our session to to uh, tell you more about this. But basically, we invest in high-profile blockchain projects um, in which we know that they're not only um, good as an, an investment, but that we all also think that we can actually add some value uh, from our knowledge and experience um, to act kind of a, as a partner. So um, this is kind of what we do in, in ventures. We have currently invested in more than 60 different projects. Um, and you're going to learn more about this next week. So moving forward a bit, um, I also wanted to share a bit about our, our team and culture so that you have an idea of um, where we are currently. Um, 
and Wintermute has currently two offices. We have one office in Singapore and one office in London, that is our biggest office. Um, our team in total are around 90 team members across both of these offices, with majority being located in London. Um, and yes, we, we have different teams inside Wintermute from DeFi traders, developers, DeFi traders, developers. We have finance department, marketing department, HR, strategy, legal, and more. Um, so yeah, we, we attract talent, not only in developers uh, and traders, but also in other departments that are core okay, in trying to make our, our uh, company be an event every day. Um, and I just wanted to, to also tackle that we have a culture that is very focused on people and team building. Um, for us, it's, it's very important to, to be working as a team. And we are proud of, of having a, a very solid team, very good relationships, a very nice place to work. Um, so really proud about, about our culture overall. Um, and I invite you to, to learn more about it next week with Aishak, who will be tackling um, careers. Now, I'm going to introduce Felix from our DeFi uh, team. Uh, Felix is going to tell you a bit more about our involvement on DeFi and, and governance. So Felix, whenever you're ready. Sure. Thanks for the introduction, Julian. Nice to meet everyone. Um, so as Julian said, basically, we're going to have a look at, at crypto or DeFi as an industry in, in, in general, and then what Vintermute does actually does in DeFi in, in particular. Um, I'm part of the, the technical DeFi team, basically. Um, and before diving into DeFi and our activities in DeFi, I think it makes sense to take a step back and look at the current financial system and basically the key players in that system, because um, that's closely related to what DeFi is, is about. So obviously, traditional financial system is very complex, consisting of different companies um, offering a variety of services, but like the most central sectors are probably banking and payment. There are money managers such as hedge funds or pension funds. Um, there are service providers like clearing houses and custodians, and also trading and investment companies or trading related companies um, such as stock exchanges, dealers and brokers, and obviously trading firms. Now, a lot of what uh, DeFi is about today is offering similar kinds of services or replacing the kinds of services these companies offers offer based on um, a novel decentralized kind of uh, technology. And basically that's, um, let's have a look at, at that. That would be the next slide, please. Um, and basically this is an MEB hackathon. So I assume most of you will, will know how the blockchain works on a fundamental level. So we're just going to highlight basically the most important characteristics. Um, Blockchains allow for real-time settlements um, in a fully transparent and open source manner. Um, they allow for self-custody of funds and um, also the strict enforcement of rules. These rules are usually embedded in code or smart contracts, which can be executed in a decentralized manner. And all of this happens in with, without centralized control. So one of the, the, the key points or characteristics of blockchains is that they are decentralized, so no single ent entity has control um, over what happens on, on this platform. And obviously, uh, de decentralization is often more kind of a spectrum than a binary kind of thing. So different chains use um, different levels of decentralization, but ideally, we would want blockchains to be perfectly decentralized. Um, now, it also makes probably makes sense to to have a look at how we got where we are today. Um, basically, everything started off in 2009 with the publication of um, the Bitcoin white paper, um, Ethereum, which basically the first smart contract blockchain was launched in 2015 and basically was the first platform that allowed um, arbitrary code to be executed on on. In, in this kind of decentralized manner and also laid the foundation for um, the big cycle or big hype around ICOs in 2017. Um, a lot of the DeFi protocols that 
really picked up at the beginning of 2020 were actually founded in 2018, basically in the midst of the bear market after that um, ICO cycle. And there, for example, protocols which most of you will have heard of, um, like Uniswap, Synthetics, Aave, which was called Eatland at the time, um, were founded basically in 2018 or around that time, and then really only start um, started getting traction in, in 2020. Um, now, the last cycle, basically, that started around two, two and a half years ago, um, basically was kicked off kind of by, by Black Thursday. So basically the, the COVID crash on which uh, crypto, a lot of the cryptocurrencies prices dropped by more than, than 30%. And that kind of kicked off um, this new wave or this new crypto cycle and led to DeFi summer, where a lot of these DeFi produ uh, protocols attracted lots of activity, lots of TVL and, and adoption. And now 2020, today, we're kind of back in, in a bear market and now it's, it's time to build again, address all the shortcomings that these um, that we've seen in, in, in these old DeFi protocols or like address the shortcomings that the current state of the ecosystem currently has basically. Um, still, um, DeFi has attracted lots of lots of TVL um, at the peak. Basically, DeFi protocols uh, attracted more than 160 billion dollars worth of capital. Um, I think the key points for that were basically that these applications allowed real-time settlements. A lot of these uh, projects allowed relatively high interest rates in basically an environment of historically historically low interest rates in, in TradFi. And last but not least, um, a lot of these protocols basically incentivized your early users by the issuance of, of tokens, um, which also boosted uh, adoption and traction of these protocols. Now today, we're basically back to around $70 billion um, dollars worth of TVL in these locked in these applications. Um, which is still orders of magnitudes higher than what we had at the beginning of, of 2020. Now, basically, this was kind of really, really rough general overview of um, how, how we got to where we are today, kind of what the, the space uh, winter mute is working in looks like today. And I think can now talk about what winter mute does in, in DeFi in particular. So as Julian already said, obviously Wintermute is um, first and foremost is a trading company. So we're a market making company um, providing liquidity across different venues. We trade crypto assets on centralized exchanges, but are also very active in, in DeFi. And um, basically what does on-chain trading mean? We trade across a variety of different constant function market makers or AMMs on both EVM and non-EVM compatible chains. So for example, we trade on, on Ethereum, on Avalanche, Matic, Solana, and then also probably a lot of the DEXs, which most of you have probably already used, like uh, Uniswap, Curve, uh, SushiSwap, and a lot of others. Um, they are also like most of these um, these taxes on, on EVM and non-EVM compatible chains are, are constant function market makers, um, but there are also central limit order books being built on uh, crypto infrastructure um, where we are actively uh, providing liquidity and, and market making on, on these venues. Um, two examples of quite well-known examples of that are Serum on Solana and um, DYDX on StarkX, uh, a ZK rollup. Um, another part of basically our, our, our trading are DeFi RFQ platforms. So there are DEX aggregators, which aim to um, source liquidity from different kinds of venues. So they'll try to source liquidity from Uniswap, Curve, um, but also from private market makers um, as us. Um, and examples of that would be one inch and Paraswap 0x, where we are plugged in into their system and basically provide liquidity in um, uh, a RFQ request for quote kind of setting. And last, of not, last but not least, we're also 
um, LPing in, in just AMMs. Um, and these activities are usually part of a collaboration with, with a project. Um, I think the, the second part of or like the, the other side of our activity in DeFi is basically our participation in, in DAO governance. Um, so we believe that the decentralized world needs robust and progressive governance systems and basically efficient decision making inside these new, new decentralized autonomous uh, organizations. And in general, we'll always try always support a long term value add decision making and try to prevent short term rent seeking proposals. So this might be token distribution programs um, without clear benefit to the protocol or users. These are the kinds of, of proposals we are likely, like we won't support. Um, so basically these are the principles by which we participate in, in governance. Now, how does this look like in practice? So we're quite active in, in forum discussions. So if you read, for example, on the DYDX governance forum, you'll see Kellen, a colleague of ours, which is whose main focus is basically governance. Um, he's quite active in these forums, actively staying in touch and, and participating in discussions. We'll vote on important proposals. And if needed or required, we'll also create our own proposals. And um, I think it's interesting um, to see like how effective this can be. And like on the next slide, there'll, there'll be an example of one of the proposals we supported or helped help to shape. Now um, we're quite active in, in DYDX um, governance forum. And what you see here is a plot of um, basically uh, token rewards um, that go to market makers. So DYDX has a token reward program to incent incentivize market makers to provide liquidity on their central limit order book exchange. And <clears throat> um, basically, um, you, like the y-axis of that, that chart is number of tokens awarded to different addresses and the differently colored regions on that graph are these different um, addresses or market makers in that case. And what you can see is, oh, what you can see is um, that after the 10th of May, something something uh, changed. And basically that's the day uh, the new token reward program was rolled out. And that token reward program um, was like kind of based on our input or our participation in these uh, forum discussions. Now, what did actually change was that before that proposal, um, DVIDX would only um, consider the volume in the book, like the volume that market makers put in the book, as well as the spread, but they wouldn't actually consider the actual traded maker volume. Um, so basically what some people would do is quote very large size um, with a large spread, and then farm these token incentives without actually the intent of, of trading. And obviously that's like a quite inefficient way to attract, attract liquidity from the YDX perspective. Now with the governance proposal, which we put forward or supported um, and which go, go, went live on the 10th of May, um, the actually traded volume was also considered in the calculation of these token rewards and that chart shows quite clearly that a lot, lot, lot of smaller market makers now also take a share of, of, of these token rewards. And there are a lot, of, lot more different addresses um, which get these rewards. So basically, um, this is an example of um, governance done well, basically. And uh, I, th I think pretty interesting one. Um, I think that that was basically the brief overview of, of DeFi and what Vintermute does in DeFi. We kept it short on purpose um, to give you the opportunity to ask any questions and um, anything you might be interested in. And I think, I'm not sure what, what, what's the best way to do, is, do it. We probably select questions from the chat. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, the best is like just uh to give some time um, for people to like to throw some questions in the chat and we're happy to, to assess some of them. 
and we are alone, so probably we won't be able to to respond all. But we do are happy to to answer some questions about what we do at Wintermute, DeFi governance in general, um, things that could contribute to a community overall. I see a lot of a lot of questions about our, our technical uh, setup, which obviously <laughs> we a bit hard to answer. Uh, yeah, basically, see one question about which percent, what percent of intermediate trading activity is done on DeFi. Um, obviously, the volumes on on CeFi are still a lot larger. So typically, we will do like typical day. We'll probably do five percent of our volume on on DeFi, um, as rough estimate. Um, we expect this probably to grow over time, um, but. Basically, a lot of the EVM trading, for example, on Ethereum mainnet happens only every 15 seconds. And that's why, like by the very nation, nature of the blockchain, basically, um, volumes on, on DeFi are a lot smaller than, than on CeFi. Uh, do you hire remote? That's maybe one for Julian. Um, like, uh, I think that most questions related to careers will be tackled next week. We are going to do a session particular on careers. Um, that's going to happen next Wednesday, 24th. Um, and everything really with careers will be tackled there. Um, but our culture is prioritary um, like in person. So most of us, we, we go to the office um, most of the days per week. But do, we do have some, some roles that are remote. Um, but I believe that Aisha would be best to, to answer that question next week. Um, and, and yeah, I invite you all to, to attend to that one. It's going to be pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw one question about here. Simi asked, what sort of MEV strategies does Wintermeet undertake, if any? Does this consist of long tail strategies? So basically, a lot of our trading will be um, uh, basically top of block MEV, what we do in, in, in detail. Um, can probably see on chain. Our wallets are not not, not that secret um, and and doxed, so I won't share any details. But most of it um, is quite short term and um, obviously related to our activities on on centralized exchanges. Are you here? Timo asks if we are using bridges with our automated bots. Um, yes, we do. Um, Obviously, bridges are always like a pretty pretty high risk to use, and that's why we're quite careful about um, implementing or integrating with bridges. Um, but uh, we basically have um, systems that handle and rebalance inventory across centralized exchanges and also uh, different chains, and, and bridges are obviously one part of that. Um, Felix just just to like give some some um, order like maybe we can accept two or three more questions and then we can wrap up the session mm -hmm. yep. sure. sounds good yeah, is Wintermute benefited or negatively affected by MEV or both um, so basically like MEV is a really really wide uh, field and in general we are not negatively affected by it um, I think that, for example, the arbitrages between centralized exchanges and decentralized exchanges could be classified as some type of MEV. People usually call that top of block uh, MEV, which is something that we do as well. But um, this, these kind of strategies don't have any negative externalities. They just basically keep um, pools in line and we'll never engage in any, any uh, kind, kind of any type, sorts of MEV that have negative externalities, such as uh, sandwiching um, or like similar strategies. Here, Axel asks, where does Wintermute name come from? I think uh, you can you can have a look at Evgeny's profile. Uh, Evgeny um, is our CEO, and this profile, uh, this name actually comes from a novel called Neuromancer. Um, so, for anyone who's interested in that. Um, Go read the book or Google the book. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe maybe let's wrap wrap it up with that. Uh, cool, cool, cool. Thank you very much, Felix, for your time. Um, 
Sure. Thank you everyone for the time, um, for trying to meet us here and learn a bit more about what we are doing or, or our views on both DeFi governance. Um, this was very brief. Um, it was just like to give you a bit more context of what we are doing um, and try to yeah, incentivate you more to try to get in touch with our recruiting team um, try to maintain some contact also with our ventures arm in case you, you're working on your own projects. Um, so I hope that it was interesting enough to motivate you to do that. Um, I really look forward to connecting with you all next Wednesday on the session that we will do on careers and ventures. Great. Thanks so much, Julian, Felix, for joining us today. Yep. And answering thanks a lot for joining. Um, thanks for everyone joining us today as well. Echoing what Julian said, please join kind of that next week event. I posted it in the chat to register for the careers with Wintermute and Ventures. Everything is on our event, bright, So register for that. We will see you next week on there. But an update, we do have another workshop in this MEV Hackathon series tomorrow, same time. This one will be MEV with Brock Smiley um, from Flashbots. Um, all of these events will be recorded as well and uploaded to YouTube. So see you guys tomorrow for that one and next week again for the careers with Wintermute. Thanks so much to the Wintermute team and everyone joining. Have a good one. <laughs>